Hey everyone, welcome to another drawing tutorial. Today we are going to draw this scene, more specifically this three person and the chairs. So this is going to be a two part video. The first part will focus on the pen and ink. In the second part, we will color the sketch using some of these inks. These are actually fountain pen inks made by the Artramentis. So we're going to see what's the difference between these inks and watercolor. If you want to follow along, you can download this reference photo in the video description below. The fountain pen that I'm using today is the Duke 209 with the Fude nib. You can find this pen on eBay, it's quite affordable. And the ink in this pen is the Artramentis Archive ink. This ink is waterproof when dry. This sketchbook is a custom-made sketchbook filled with Archer's hot press watercolor paper. This sketchbook is not available for sale online. This fountain pen I'm using is a Duke 209 with a Fude nib. A Fude nib is a bent nib that is capable of drawing thin and thick lines. And this sketchbook is a customized sketchbook that is made with 100% cotton Archer's watercolor paper. This is hot press paper, so the surface is very smooth. For this sketch, I'll just be drawing this person here. So I'm going to teach you some basic techniques for drawing. The first thing to note is to take the proportion. So this is the height of the person and to the bottom of the chair. The midway point is somewhere around here. We need to take note of the midway point. Now when drawing, we need to make sure that we do not draw it too big, that we run out of space or draw it too small that we cannot feel the pitch. So the person, I'm going to place the person on the right side. The, the stack of chair will be here, here, and here. So this is the midway point, which sort of coincides with the tie, the leg of the person. So if we take a look at this midway to the top, the proportion of the head, it's about maybe a quarter. So when drawing, make sure don't draw the head too big, if not, Everything else is going to be too big. So there's this collar that goes down here to the chin of the person and then turns here and then comes down like this. And we can draw the person's head like this. We have another collar here. The sharp point ends here, aligns with this part here and then comes down here like this. And we can see some white here. I will draw the big shapes first and fill in the features later. So as much as possible, I'm not going to lift my pen. You can see me moving my pen back again to restate the line. So this elbow will come down here and this part will come here. The collar ends here, right below the edge of this face here. And when drawing, try especially when drawing clothes, the lines are not straight like this. So this is a bit off. Try and follow exactly what you see. Spend more time observing your subject than what you have on your paper. The more time you spend observing your subject, the more accurate your sketch is going to be. So we have this zipper pocket here, and this side here has some um, on the other side of the clothes. Hands come up slightly before it turns down to the fingers, and the fingers are like this. So this is the midway point. I'm actually placing my finger on the pitch to remind me that the midway point is there. So whatever I'm drawing, I must make sure that the tie on the leg of the person is here. It shouldn't cross here. Let's draw the chair on the left side first so that I don't run my hand across the right side. So one of the chairs is here, the corner of the chair is here. Basically, I'm placing this point between the hand and the leg here. The tie stops here right below the finger and then turns down at an angle like this, not straight down like this. So you really have to pay attention to the, to the angle. This is the chair. There are some things on the, on the chair. So as much as possible, try when you're positioning things on your page, try not to have uh, important elements in the page gutter. 
So here, uh, I think it's still all right. So I just draw down all the way, the chair down all the way. I'm using this as a measurement tool to measure the height of the chair. This is about one unit, so the chair will be about maybe two and a half units. Goes up, comes down like this. We have the leg here. And this is the trousers. So it's really about concentration. So we have this small chairs below and more chairs at the top. So when drawing across the page cutter, it's well, it's not that nice. So this is the chair. Right. So maybe now I'm going to move off to drawing the left side. We have some things on the shorter chair. So here I'm drawing a bit looser. I want to draw a bit fast. Sometimes when you draw a bit too slow, your lines, they are not, they look very hesitant and they don't look as nice. So here I want to draw a bit faster. The newspaper, the stack of newspaper here intersects the chair here. And we have the chair here, the leg of the chair here stops here. The other leg stops here, so we can sort of join them together like that. And this here will come here. So now I'm drawing inside this shape here. So this line here, this is the long trousers of the person. And the leg for this chair here will stop somewhere here comes up here, this is the top of the chair, turns here to the, bot to the bottom of this sleeve here, and then make a right turn to the bottom of the elbow. And this leg here will come down all the way here, align with this part here. And then turns this angle slightly, goes up, come down, comes down again. So when I'm drawing, notice that whatever that I have drawn, I would always use other elements that I have drawn to help me place, uh, to help me place my lines. The leg of the person who is wearing a sandal. And this trousers will continue behind here, goes up like this. Let's put some wrinkle lines here. For this stack of chairs here, it's very close to the elbow, but not touching the elbow. And goes to the right side. This. So this is the first leg of this first chair that is stacked on top. I may want to draw some of these elements here as well. I would just want to crop them off like this. just to get a sense that there is more going on on the right side. And there is this chair, this red chair on the right side, which is cropped off as well at the bottom here. So don't be, well, don't be afraid when you are drawing, you're just practicing. It's like, for example, when you're playing basketball, when you shoot the hoops, most of the time, your, the ball is not going to go in, but you are not supposed to be dejected. You are supposed to keep practicing. So we have this basket of things here. So we have a stack of chairs here. We need to extend this slightly and here. And this stack of chairs will go behind here. So we can draw the ships within the shape here continues here and here and here we need to draw the legs behind as well the more focus you are at observing the more accurate your sketch is going to be this is almost done let me just draw the features on this person so the eyes are going to be quite small if you 
look at people from observation, the eyes are usually quite small on the face. Just to provide some context, maybe I want to draw the draw some of the shot front. So I'm going to use very thin lines to draw the shot front. And notice my lines, they are very loose and very, um, they are not straight, right? These lines are supposed to be straight, but I'm not drawing them straight. So I'm just scribbling some details here using rather thin lines. The thick lines are for the main subject, the thin lines are for the, the secondary subjects, the subjects that are not that important. So later on when I'm coloring, I will not be coloring the background. I just want to use some lines to draw. We'll just focus the colors on the main pen and ink drawing. So this is not exactly uh, from the photo. So this is what I have so far. Some of the proportion, it's a bit off and also the lines, they are a bit more wobbly than usual. I usually draw a bit slower when I'm recording, so some of the lines, they seem to be a bit more hesitant. Now let me show you some of the other sketches of the same scene that I've drawn. So this is rough watercolor paper. I actually used a Fude Neat Pen on this rough watercolor paper and the lines did not turn out quite well, which was why I switched to this smoother paper. And if you feel like your drawing it's not uh, nice, you can just keep on practicing. So here I've practiced some more and here the lines you can see they are much more confident. There is less of the wobbly line. And if you're not good at drawing chairs, then just practice drawing chairs. So it's all about practice. The more you draw, the more confident you will get and also the better and more confident your drawing will look. Let's see where my proportions are off. So for this chair here, this is supposed to be more narrow. This is a tall rectangle, but here my chairs are a bit shorter. And the top of this chair here, it's supposed to be more compressed because of perspective here. I've drawn it a bit too, um, like it's from the top view. So it's not that accurate. So why this happens is I'm drawing the chairs from what I think a chair would look like rather than from what the reference photo is showing me. So if you want accuracy, do spend more time observing when you're drawing, before you draw the line. Always ask yourself, tell yourself, where is this line in relation to other elements that I've drawn? Where's this point in relation to other elements that I have drawn? And that would give you a more, that would make the sketch more accurate for you. So this is part one of the tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. In part two, we'll color this sketch.